Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, this is kind of a unique one. I am going to react and provide some comments on a podcast done by a group called Day Zero Security. They did a really excellent job, and from what I can tell, they highlight different zero days, different CVEs, different security things, and each week they hand select a few CVEs to really focus in on, and it just happened, they chose my CVE about a week ago, the CVE I found in GoCMS, which is stored cross-site scripting leading to owner takeover, and they go through the blog post I wrote, they go through my vulnerability disclosure, and they provide their own thoughts as people who actually use Ghost CMS. So I listened to this briefly earlier today, I wanna listen to it a little more fully, but I'll even like pause it at different parts and give you my reaction and some of my thoughts and how I found this, things that I think they're spot on with, things that I maybe disagree with. But overall, um, hats off to Day Zero Security. No idea if you guys will watch this, but love it. You did an excellent job, I think, analyzing this and do appreciate you taking the time to do this. So without any further ado, let me share my screen. Here it is, day zero. Would encourage you to subscribe to them. I will drop a link to them in the YouTube video. But let's go ahead and make it big and dive into things. And Justin goes to the Asmund Gold of hacking. Yeah, dude, the Asmund Gold of hacking. A lot less money than him, but a lot cleaner, a lot cleaner room. So it <laughs> balances itself out. Let's go ahead and start this. First, we have a post by Rhino. Oh, it's really quiet. Let me up my audio. Security labs on. Okay, that's nice and, and loud now. Let me know in chat if that is too quiet, but it looks like modern OBS, it looks good. Let me let it play now. On a Ghost CMS stored XSS. And this was a. You guys see that? Tyler Ramsby. What's up? Stored XSS and the profile image functionality, which is kind of a funny area to have it, reminiscent of some of the very old like forum attacks and whatnot. Getting a bit. Of yeah, and that's one of the things you'll notice when you study uh, cross-site scripting. What they're going to point out, what I pointed out, is this is through a profile image. So I think about the old forums, not just profile images, but you'll even see this on certain threads where people like trying to embed HTML in the comments. That used to be a thing that you can embed HTML and JavaScript in the comments, and when users view it, it would execute. But this is also similar if you remember uh, for the Counter Strike players. Counter Strike went through this whole fiasco where they were vulnerable to cross-site scripting in the username field and when you vote kicked a player it triggered the cross-site scripting you couldn't do a whole lot but with cross-site scripting you could at least get ip so you could get ips and essentially dox other people you were playing with that's all the same core vulnerability of cross-site scripting then into the background they talk about the varying privilege levels so in go cms for those who haven't used it you do have levels like contributors who can write posts but not publish them authors, editors, admins, and owners, which are essentially super admins that can't be deleted and can access spilling information. And each user can set a profile picture, which can include standard image formats like PNG or JPEG, but also SVG, which, yeah, as they say, it's a good place to look for XSS issues. And in the case of- Yeah, and here's the unique thing. If you are a web uh, developer, I don't really see the point of accepting SVG uploads or profile pictures. I can understand it for like the purpose of Ghost CMS and other CMSs for blog posts and using SVGs, but SVGs, which I explained in the blog, are XML based, which by nature, they're able to include JavaScript if it's not sanitized properly. And that's what's going on here. It's, if they only accepted uh, PNGs or JPEGs, which are standard image formats, this vulnerability would not be possible. So Ghost CMS, they make no attempt at sanitizing the XML coming in for SVGs. And so you can just create an SVG that contains script tags in it to execute JavaScript. And yeah. wherever that image is displayed to it. And if you're new to cross-site scripting, that's all this is. Like the script type, this is a very simple POC document domain just shows, hey, this is the website that's being executed on. This isn't malicious right now. This is just a very standard POC to see if you can execute JavaScript. Victim, they can access them. So... Yeah, that's kind of, it was something I noticed when I was going through the topics this week. This is a simple access, straightforward access. I, I imagine most of our listeners are familiar with this tech. But in all of our episodes of Day Zero, I don't think we, I think we've only talked about like just a direct SVG with XS in it once. I think it's only come up once and it was in a crypto topic, like cryptocurrency smart contract. 
a little bit of context here doing actual pen testing i see this pretty often i would say i've seen this anywhere from four to six times in the past year on web app pen test where cross site scripting via svgs are possible so this is something to look for if you're a web app pen tester or doing bug bounties contract stuff kind of ha and most of the discussion was around the crypto aspect and not the xss and so i just kind of felt like you know it we should at least mention this once over the entirety of the podcast. Appreciate it. Is a very it. common vector to get access through images when they support SVG, which generally I would argue just probably don't support SVG. I agree. Don't do it. You, know, you kind of have to sometimes. I mean, I get it. Companies do, but then you want to filter for the script stuff. Ghost do. doesn't. They do not. But yeah. The only kind of novelty here in my mind was that and vendor response which i guess i can or actually i guess escalation but you can get into that specter yeah so we talked a little bit about this before the show so what they call out as a potential attack here is if the owner of the site gets caught by this which is very likely you know with profile images where they're displayed in a lot of different places they could use the xss to admin role their own user and then transfer ownership to them and while and just one clarification here that's not the only attack vector when I created this, I wanted to figure out like, what is the the most severe attack I could do? And the most severe attack I could do is going from a contributor, the lowest privilege user who can't even um, publish their own post to taking over the owner of the tenant. But that's just what I demonstrated with cross-site scripting. You can do a lot more than that. So actually I could target any other staff user. And if they go to my image, I could update their email. I could change their email to me. I could facilitate account takeovers that way. So in my blog, I highlight the most severe case of this, but generally speaking, when you can execute JavaScript in the context of another user session, you can do a lot of stuff, um, a lot of bad stuff. Well, in order to do this, they would need like the user ID, email, and admin role IDs, which are randomized. They could just send a request to this API, admin users API. Yeah, so what I did, it is randomized, but I wrote a Python script. You can see this in the GitHub. If you just execute the Python script with your user, uh, the attacker's user and the attacker's password, and then the host of the ghost uh, CMS you're attacking, it will actually dynamically generate everything that you need and spit out a malicious.svg file that will lead to owner takeover. So I automated the entire process with that Python script. Endpoint after being authenticated to get all that inf information. But... So Ghost does support inserting raw HTML into posts. Uh, Z and I kind of checked this out because I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember the limitations on this. So we use Ghost a fair amount. I don't really use the raw HTML personally in, in posts that I've done. But um, yeah, I wasn't sure that, if you but... could include like script tags and stuff, but you can. So you can, like, if, if somebody has the capability to write posts and publish them, then... And if you, if you miss the blog, Ghost CMS is used by Apple, Mozilla... Open AI. So a lot of big organizations use Go CMS. This isn't like some minor uh, CMS nobody's heard about. They kind of already have the ability to do XSS, which is why the vendor probably doesn't view it as a valid vector. And there's but see, that's that's the one part I, I push back on. Um, they say that it's already designed for staff users to publish HTML. That's not necessarily true about the contributor user. It is true about the other users, but if you go back up to the roles, the contributor doesn't actually have permission to publish their own post. They can create drafts, but those drafts have to be approved. What I think makes this unique is I'm not attacking via a uh, blog post, I'm attacking via a profile picture as a contributor user who otherwise does not have permissions to execute JavaScript no official patch coming for it but the fact that it's being done through profile images and can hit more areas and just what things I said. like the admin panel potentially does make it a little bit more interesting but yeah the impact is somewhat neutered by the fact that being able to put code into pages is sort of already a supported thing once again not for contributors it's not a supported thing for contributors in the security model, I guess. Yeah, and kind of one important thing is the administrative panel has to be hosted on the slash ghost path. So, like, usually you're going to see if it's a ghost blog, it's going to be hosted on, like, whatever that ghost domain is slash ghost will be the admin panel because it has to be on slash ghost. You can't change that. But you can configure the domain it's on. And so, while normally, I believe, like, the default way people are going to run this is you'll have the ghost admin panel on slash ghost and you'll have like the blog on like the root of the domain 
And so in XSS in a post, you know, anybody who can publish can get access. They'll be able to access also that slash ghost endpoint, though you can change the domain. So even though it has to be on the slash ghost, you can actually run the admin panel off of a different domain. Well, that might not be the most common way to do it. Yeah, but even if you do that, the attack still works, right? Like uh, what ghost says is, hey, separate your admin portal from your blog. So if there's cross-site scripting in your blog, it can't attack your staff. But I'm doing cross-site scripting in the admin panel itself. Nothing to do with the blog. So even if you separate into two different domains, this attack still works. <clears throat> that would actually mean that this issue in the profile image does it does get displayed on the admin panel and so exactly. it does impact the admin panel specifically yep uh whereas if it's just on a post where you're able to get this post previews actually post previews still only happen through the main domain i think uh i don't know i tried so we use ghosts as like a headless thing we don't actually use ghosts to publish the content so our setup is a little bit weird but the preview domain is always going through the ghost URL. You need to at least have the preview thing mounted or at least access, which we don't. But either way, where I'm getting at is posts, you know, on the main website. If you have the admin on a different website, you wouldn't actually be able to access the admin API or as they do here, uh, the admin API. But you also won't be able to do any of that stuff. Uh, you won't be able to access like anything sensitive. You would just be accessing the blog, which isn't actually that usable for an excess for this image. So here's where I, I might be misunderstanding them or they're misunderstanding me. This has nothing to do with the blog part of Ghost CMS. It's all being done on the admin side of it as an authenticated user. So you would have to compromise a contributor before you can do this. But the interesting thing about Ghost is it does not support um, multi-factor authentication natively. Now there's some different third-party things you can try to implement to get it to work, but it's not natively supported for MFA. What that means is if you can get leaked passwords from like a breach database, you can imagine large organizations have a bunch of staff users. All it would take an adversary to do is to compromise one of those staff users. And without MFA, if it's just password authentication, you are on their staff page and you can um, go forward with this attack based one or svg based one you would actually get it on the admin panel so you could do this inside of the admin panel or well inside like the content management panel it's also it is the admin panel but it's not only admins who log in there that is i just realized in the recording my face down here is like the same size as their two avatars it looks like i am part of their show where like the contributors the lower role that we talk about for this attack would also be to log in there so there definitely is an impact for some setups that makes it a little bit different. Okay, so I just kind of took a look here. It looks like the uh, admin API session token is limited to the path of like the admin API. So you wouldn't be able to ac access that from a... Uh, you won't be able to access page. that from just a post. You would need to have that running on the... And just thinking out loud, the other thing you could do, knowing that you can separate into two different domains, if you had your admin domain and only allow listed certain IPs, that would really uh, help prevent this attack because people without that allow listed IP wouldn't even be able to attempt to log in. So even without MFA, you can kind of stop me, the attacker in my tracks by only having a loud list of specific IPs who can access the admin portal. So maybe it's on a VPN, you only have access behind a VPN. That would prevent this type of attack from being successful. The admin page? Defense the in depth. thing there is while you can add HTML into your post, the editor itself does not show that JavaScript. It doesn't render it. Uh, yeah. yeah, and like I said, the preview works through a different path. So what they do is they make a request to the API slash admin session to get the session. This is my Python so it script. It doesn't even matter about the cookie. You just need to know what the domain is for the you uh, for the um for the control for panel. The for control those. panel, yeah. Control yeah. panel is a better term than I've been saying is admin panel. Okay, so I was talking a lot about that cookie and stealing that, but you just yes, you don't have access to it at all. Although if the admin panel is on a different page, you can't uh, make requests to like if it's on another domain you can't make requests to this i'm not sure if this is what they're getting at but you can't steal the cookie anyways because the cookie has i believe the secure flag set and http only so you can't steal the admin cookie with cross-site scripting anyways which is why i demonstrated a different kind of attack not stealing an admin cookie but rather doing a full account takeover on the owner 
So yeah, you still have the impact uh, because it's running in the admin panel. Uh, like that, I think makes this one different than just XSS from the other sources that I agree. users could do. That's why I reported but it. But only when it comes to these ones that are set up so as it's not running on the same domain. Like the content panel isn't on the same domain. Um, Which, while I don't think that would be a common setup, it's probably not super uncommon either. Yeah, like the fact that they can be run headless is a deal. Like it is something that they're known for doing. It is why I opted for Ghost is because they have this really nice API that uh, lets you do some, you know, nice queries. You can do, it supports, like, they have a GraphQL interface, which makes it nice for selecting just what you want or just what you care about sort of deal. And they have this standard, more RESTful API, so you can use that too. But point being that just having the XSS on the main blog isn't necessarily going to include hitting the actual website because you can't do this fetch like their attack is assuming that you're running inside of a post i think or inside of like the main url but this would apply to just running on the admin panel and that's so that's the part once again is a little bit incorrect i this isn't an attack on the blog side. This is an attack on the admin panel side itself. You would just have to update the URL so it points to the different domain that the admin panel is being served on. This is not attacking blog posts. This is admin only attacking other staff users. That's the one that would be able to make these fetches. It's the one running inside the admin panel. So yeah, that does make a difference is what I'm getting at. Roundabout way getting there, first looking at the cookie, realizing that didn't actually work out. And then, yeah, this just being able to access the admin panel URL, if there's on different domain, would make a difference here. If they're on the same domain, this works regardless. Like, you'd be able to do this from the post base one also. But, yeah, so the impact's interesting. I do think this one stands out again because it's running uh, or because the excess can be sourced on the slash ghost endpoint, the content endpoint or content management endpoint. Yes. Uh, like that definitely makes a difference here. At least in my mind, it makes mind a difference too. over the impact. Yeah, and I mean, overall, I don't really agree with the vendor not viewing it as a valid vector, just because kind of like I don't agree either. The top of the topic, <laughs> I don't really think you need to support SVGs for profile images. Uh, I don't think you need vector graphics for that. I agree. It just seems like an unnecessary uh, risk, or at least yes. if you're going to support it, then yeah, you should be running it through like DOM. Then Cure sanitize it too. exactly. Uh, which is what know, the patch they vector. offer yeah so oh, they have the patch that's the other thing guys i patched my own cve and it's st from what i know still a pending pull request like i i reported it and fixed it for him but it's still a pending pull request it, this is still vulnerable that mitigates the issue that just does yeah. dump here yeah it's a very i don't think a yeah, lot like, of it's an easy issue to fix i don't know why the vendors would be like yeah no we don't care like, i agree it's, it's not like it's a difficult vulnerability that part of it honestly might be they have a bug bounty program so if they acknowledge it as a valid vulnerability they technically have to pay out the bug bounty i, I didn't get paid bug bounty for this requires re-architecting something you know yeah so on one hand i would say that but you know if you have the belief that any of these users can already add scripts and can already basically do this. I kind of get the feeling of, well, we're not going to deal with this one case because they can just, you know, add the HTML through, uh, through the normal interface. But the contributor can't. I kind of get that. And in terms of the SVG support, if they use kind of generic where it's not necessarily profile images, but it's just uploaded as an image. So you can do the same thing by uploading an image through the post like you can click Contributor and drag an image on there and it'll actually or you can add it as an image they have a little thing there that you can upload the image that way too i'm not sure if it stores them distinctly because it's a profile image or not I so actually it stores it in the same way but my patch fixes it on both so my patch sanitizes svgs for profile images as well as in blog posts so my patch actually fixes the crisis scripting in both instances that they're talking about don't think it actually does like i think it's just their standard upload supports the svg and in the standard upload i could see a reason why somebody might want that feature not super common but i could see a reason why somebody might actually want to be able to like do some scripting yep. on their svg and do some stuff there totally uh, for a regular post image yeah yes sure. so if it's like the same thing between them i can kind of see it and if like what some they don't talk about is if you could do the same sort of SVG upload 
with the picture upload, like just in a post. You can. That might also be an issue, or maybe not. They don't call it out either way. So I guess it's probably safest to assume this so, is just for... I didn't I didn't call it out because GoCMS says they that's not a valid vector. Like that itself isn't, so that's why I didn't call that specific one out. The profile image. But again, that also comes down. The profile image will land inside of that content panel. Either way, like, I don't know. I guess it comes down to perspective. Like, I could understand a perspective on why it wouldn't get patched. Me I would too. rather see the security. I patched it myself. Just though. not have the insecure. I, I'd actually I rather see them also strip content by default, like strip <clears throat> script tags out of your content by default, and then allow that to be enabled. Yeah, having that sort of option that would That's be a good more call. Yeah, yeah, I'd default rather see deny. default deny on that in particular, especially because of this obvious access to to the API through it. It, it does feel just like a. I, either securing there or securing something with the API, like having it, you know, maybe running it default elsewhere. I don't know. That that doesn't feel like a good solution to me. It's still like I, the whole principle of defense in depth, right? There may not be one good solution, but you implement as many as you can. Defense in depth. So if an attacker gets through one area, one layer, there's more layers for them to jump through. I have to think about it a little bit. Make the attacker's job hard, another right? Another thing about needing to go through, well, then you maybe need tighter sessions i could see some things with session management perhaps like keeping short sessions so you know they'd have to be logged in at the time but and like ensuring credentials so you have like i think my bb does it where you log or php bb does it where you log in every time you want to access the admin panel it doesn't like store it for very long Sure. The other thing would be like any major changes to the account to require re-authentication. So if transferring ownership required the owner to re-authenticate with their password, this would fail because I can't, I don't know their password. I can't pass their password in the JavaScript. So just requiring re-authentication on things like email changes and um, ownership changes. If you require re-authentication, that would also be a defense in depth layer to prevent this from happening. Maybe something along those lines, you know, could be used to mitigate it a bit, but they're not not perfect solutions. I don't know. I'm just kind of talking right now about I didn't think about this beforehand. There are some options, but... Basically, there's some defense in depth that could be yeah, employed for situations key. like this, and I think it would make sense to take steps like that. But ultimately, you know, it's up to uh, the Ghost Foundation, so... Yeah, they've, they've made their choice. And I think their choice is defensible. I don't agree with that, but I think it is at least defensible because these I are fairly, going to be fairly privileged people. Yep. Um, yeah. Like, you're generally not inviting random people to be contributors on the blog. You might take a post from them. But that's where I think, like, the the uh, compromising accounts is MFA is not enabled natively. I think it is realistic that... Like if I was targeting an organization, let's say at um, contoso.com, like the classic one, you could easily look up at contoso.com in a breach database and do some password spraying. If you could compromise an account, you could pivot into this attack vector. And then maybe like add a user and just post like giving them credit for it, but not actually letting them into the whole blog system. It does feel somewhat privileged off. So I understand the perspective. I disagree, but understand. Appreciate that. Yeah. All right, so getting I into our too. next vulnerability, we have one detailed by Emmett Shen. All right, there we go. So that is their reaction to my CVE and, and my reaction, my response to it. I want to say a huge thank you to Day Zero Security for taking the time to even cover the CVE, to share your thoughts, to give some of your own expert feedback and analysis of it. I learned a lot just by watching and listening to your podcast. And once again, thank you. Hopefully those who are watching this video uh, got a little more context about the CVE. CVE, the reason I reported it, and some defense in depth things that you can implement not only in Go CMS, but some concepts on how you should apply defense in depth to whatever application you are doing. If you're on the blue team or if you're a developer, there's never a magic bullet that fixes everything, but rather thinking of as many defensive in depth layers as you can and implementing all of them. So if an attacker gets past one layer, they can't get past the other thing. And your job is just like make the attacker, the pen tester's job really, really difficult because they'll give up and go to a low hanging bug instead of targeting your org. So think about defense in depth and how you can implement it. So, hey, hopefully you found this video helpful. I will see you in the next one.